Good morning and welcome to our service this morning on Sunday the 22nd of November. Hopefully you've all received a copy of the newsletter through your email. If not and you wish to be added to our email distribution list, please contact us via Facebook Messenger and we will pass your details on to the parish office. Or there will be a few copies in church and you can always go and pick one up from there. There's just a few things I want to draw your attention to. Of course, we have our coffee morning on Zoom after the service this morning. And then um, on Friday, we have Advent Evening Prayer on Facebook. That will be at 6.30. So it'll be Facebook Live at 6.30 on Friday. And then, of course, next week, hopefully, depending on where we are in the tier system for COVID restrictions, there will be our pop-up shop on Friday, the 4th of December. So please just keep an eye out on our Facebook page for updates regarding that event. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather as your people around your word. Fill us with the Holy Spirit as we sing your praises, hear your truth and ask for your help. We pray that we may know you better and love you more for your name's sake. Amen. Let's sing our first hymn. Rejoice, the Lord is King.
whenever we come before our Lord and Maker, we always say sorry to him for the things that we've done that we shouldn't have, for the things that we haven't done and should have, and the things that perhaps we've said that have been unkind to one another. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven, knowing our unworthiness and sin. Let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. <clears throat> Turn to us again, O God, our Saviour and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near to those that fear you. Your glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great king, a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry earth. Come, let us bow down in worship let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 15. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will to you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. <clears throat> May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. 
I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all our brothers and sisters in Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of St Matthew, chapter 25, beginning to read at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to the ones on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, thirsty or give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you. The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was ill and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes? or ill or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these my brothers or sisters, you did not do for me. They will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Today is the last Sunday in the church calendar and we celebrate the feast of of Christ the King before Advent begins next week. And I guess you could say that today is the church's New Year's Eve. But did you know that this feast has only been celebrated since 1925? It was created by Pope Pius IX as a reaction to the rise of secularism throughout the world. And he hoped that by establishing a feast day, that people would understand that the church has a right to freedom and that Christ 
must reign in our hearts and our minds, our wills and our bodies. And that it was marking the end of one year into the beginning of the next with the first week of Advent. And of course, the first week of Advent is about waiting to hear the story of the Nativity, waiting for Jesus. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of balloons. I hate the way they squeak and bang. But there is rather something that is celebratory and joyful about them, isn't there? Especially the helium ones. We buy them for birthdays, for anniversaries, for new babies, for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, retirement and leaving parties. We have them at fairs and children's parties and clowns even make animals out of them. They brighten someone's day up if they're poorly. And I've conducted funerals where we have let balloons go and fly into the air. Not really as a sombre moment, but as a remembering the joy of the person's life. And in my commentary, the writer talks about balloons. They say, one Sunday we had balloons in church because the Bible reading for the day was about the joy in Christ. The balloons were of every colour, helium filled and tied to the end of every row of chairs. Some though escaped and got caught up in the rafters. Much to the delight of the children. And miraculously, none of them burst during the service. There was an atmosphere of light heartedness as the balloons bobbed about at the end of the seats. One child said to the vicar at the end of the service, balloons are the best idea ever. Now I think that balloons would not be a good idea at every Sunday service because they are rather superficial. They deflate, they leak helium, they go bang and they are gone. They can't really express the eternal joy found in Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. It wouldn't be appropriate to have them in church every Sunday either because we must have time for lament, for brokenness, for confession, to be honest about the pain in our lives and in the world and experience God through this too. Today is Christ the King Sunday. And perhaps if we were in church, it would be an amazing reason to have a party, wouldn't it? To celebrate Christ the King, make a joyful noise to the Lord. For no other reason than to praise him. But this year, things are a bit different. I am here in the rectory. You are at home too. And we've had to put lots of things on hold this year, haven't we? Perhaps this year has been a year of lament for you. Perhaps you are grieving the death of a loved one and you weren't able to give them the funeral that you wanted to or that they deserved. Perhaps you have been receiving hospital treatment and it's been delayed or your operation has been postponed. Perhaps this year was a big birthday year, or an anniversary, or maybe your wedding has been postponed, or that once in a lifetime holiday just hasn't happened. 
And what about Christmas? Now, I've been a bit cross with the press this week with headlines about Christmas saying things like that Christmas has been cancelled this year because we know it hasn't. Yes, it will be very different, but it definitely has not been cancelled. I've had several conversations with people and for some they are looking forward to something a little quieter, a little gentler, with none of the expectations of the perfect day, which we know, of course, does not exist. To a Christmas that remembers whose birthday it is. That we remember the baby born into poverty to a young mum who obeys God with wise men who knew exactly who he was, who came to worship him, with shepherds who listened to the angels' voices and came to see the baby. The story of the nativity will be told. Christmas is not cancelled. Because perhaps the type of Christmas that the media is talking about is one where the birthday boy gets forgotten. When it's all about the food and the drink and Santa and presents and how the only way the advertisers tell us that we can have a great Christmas is to max out on our credit card. Perhaps this year, the birthday boy will be centre stage. Perhaps this year, the birthday boy, Jesus, will get noticed. Now, did you know that in 1647, they tried to cancel Christmas? It was just at the end of the First Civil War and there was all sorts of hullabaloo going on in and around Parliament. Decorations of holly and ivy were banned. The sale of alcohol and festive food was restricted and festivities were not allowed. But it was still Jesus's birthday, the nativity story was still told. People still remembered the baby born into the world who would save us from our sins. So Christmas is not cancelled. We can still decorate our homes inside and out. We can string as many fairy lights as we dare hang tinsel on the tree. We can remind ourselves that Jesus is the true light of all the world, that he came into our world to give us light, to give us hope, to give us joy, to tell us about God's love. Yes, Christmas is going to be very different this year but it is definitely not cancelled. The nativity story will still be told. Perhaps this year, you may wish to focus on Christmas in a different way, starting with Advent. Perhaps join us for our Advent evening prayer or subscribe to the free diocesan Advent calendar. Perhaps you've bought the book that Di and I recommended at home in Advent. But I want to challenge you to think about Advent with fresh eyes, in a fresh way. To really celebrate and see the celebration of today that Christ is King. And then for us to pause as we await his coming this Christmas. Perhaps quieter, 
perhaps more reflective as we prepare for Jesus, for Christ the King. And here in Ephesians, we hear of that great hope that Jesus Christ is to us and how by his birth, life, his death and resurrection, he is King of heaven and earth and is seated at the right hand of the Father. As Christians, we have this hope that we are one in Christ through our faith in him and we will be brought into his kingdom. And that is something to celebrate. That is something to rejoice over because it is all through the love of God and his grace that we are welcomed into his heavenly home. Christmas is not cancelled. The nativity story will still be told. Amen. And if there's anything that I've said today that you're not quite sure about, or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us via the Messenger app on our Facebook page. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now have our time of intercession, starting with the collect for this Sunday. God uh, the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. And for our intercessions this morning, when I say we are your people, the response is the sheep of your pasture. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. And as always, there'll be pauses between each bidding for you to add your own prayers. Gathered as God's people all over Pakefield and beyond, let us pray. Loving God, in all our ministry as the church family, on Sundays and weekdays, may we give glory to you and further your kingdom. Direct us to those who are searching and give us the wisdom to know how best to draw them into your love. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Loving God, may we actively seek to do good, to stand up against injustice, and to work for peace. Lord, rid the world of the terrible evils that result in unvoiced objections and unspoken misgivings. Give us courage to act as true citizens of heaven. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Loving God, may the way we manage our homes, decisions, time and money 
be in keeping with your calling as our calling as inheritance of the kingdom may your love undergird all our living We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Loving God, search for the lost. Bring back those who have strayed. Bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Help us all to share in this work of loving care. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Loving God, welcome into your kingdom all whose lives show them to be your servants, whether or not they have known you by name. Prepare us all to meet you with confidence of sins confessed and forgiven. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Loving God, you have shown us such love and humility. We offer you our thanks and praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We will now have our second song this morning, King of Kings. Strong deliver, beginning and end. 
let us say our closing prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path and a strength in our lives. Use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in love and joy and peace to tell others the good news of Jesus. In the name of Christ. Amen. So stay safe. God bless and see you all soon.